Right friends, welcome back to main events. This is 19th week from 9th May to 15th May. We are going to deliberate on issues pertaining to forest fires in Uttarakhand. What are the facts? Then another important aspect is what the government needs to do to control forest fires. Then third important point is how it is a big blow to biodiversity that we are going to discuss. Another important aspect with regard to forest fires in Uttarakhand is the formation of a black carbon and how it affects environment. Then one more important aspect of the week is draft geospatial information regulation bill 2016 put forward by the Ministry of Home Affairs and subsequently government said that it is going to reconsider some of the suggestions due to the concern expressed in several quarters. Then we are going to deliberate on Supreme Court's sarcastic comments on both the centre and the state governments and Supreme Court's directives to the centre. Then when it comes to economy and banking, India and Mauritius signed protocol to amend double taxation avoidance agreement. We are going to deliberate on what is meant by double taxation avoidance agreement? What is the need for amending the double taxation avoidance agreement by signing a protocol? These things we are going to deliberate this week. First and the most important aspect is forest fires in Uttarakhand. It created panic and alarm across the country and if you look at the facts and figures, almost 2500 hectares of forest land was gutted and this took place in Uttarakhand. And the second important point is there was a loss of wildlife, thousands of trees due to fire at several locations simultaneously. And the interesting point is this fire broke out simultaneously at several locations and loss to flora and fauna that means wildlife and different species of trees occurred on massive scale and British planted this chir pine trees for their commercial interests. Please look into this slide these are chir pine trees and chir pine trees have got other value. The other value is from its resin. You may ask what is meant by resin of a chir pine tree. Please look into this slide. This is a resin of a chir pine tree and from resin one is a turpentine oil which is used in pharmaceutical industry and for perfumes is extracted and on the other side rosin is extracted. Rosin is basically used for manufacturing soaps paints and these two are the products of a resin of a chir pine tree. One is a turpentine, the second one is a rosin. Then environmentalists feel that timber and land mafia are responsible for this man-made fires at several locations and one section of people strongly feel that these are man-made fires with an eye on timber and land and timber and land mafia is quite strong in these areas of Uttarakhand. Then climate change is partly responsible for this disaster. Then mismanagement of Uttarakhand government subsequent to 2013 floods is still fresh in the memory of the people. Then haphazard urbanization with utter disregard for environmental norms as well as land mafia, local administration excess is also evident. In due course of time, local people got alienated. Previously, local people used to protect the forests and now they got alienated. And that is one reason why the fires took place simultaneously at several locations. Ultimately, seven Indian Air Force choppers that is helicopters and three army battalions with 6000 people were mobilized and El Nino as we have already discussed climate change El Nino and lack of pre-monsoon showers may be another reason and you may ask what is El Nino. El Nino is basically warming up of 
Pacific Ocean that is equatorial Pacific Ocean towards the coast of uh, South America because of which atmospheric changes takes place at a gap of around 2 to 7 years across the world that is El Nino. Right? So, these are all responsible and this is factual information with regard to forest fires in Uttarakhand and what is to be done. The fundamental point is what needs to be done to control such type of fires in future. First and the foremost is bring back original broadleaf forests to protect the biodiversity. This uh, chir pine trees uh, planted by the British have got commercial interests and their leaves are just like needles. Please look into this slide. These are chir pine trees. These are just like needles and because of its uh, structure, they are not in a position to ensure biodiversity in the forest region. So, the need of the hour is uh, to bring back uh, broad leaf forests uh, so that uh, several other species uh, can also coexist with the forests. Then the government uh, should clear dry leaves and highly combustible pine needles uh, in advance of summer. In advance of summer, the regular practice is uh, to clear this uh, pine needles because they are highly inflammable and this year this uh, clearance of uh, pine needles was not ensured. Then exemplary punishments must be given in a time bound manner if the allegations of a man made fires is really true then there is a need to introduce a stringent laws that restrict the sale of land to non-residents. Then integrating local villages for the conservation of these forests and scientific ways to protect the forests must be formulated. Then the last bastions of oak and rhododendron must be protected. Please look into this slide. These are oak and rhododendron. Then technology already exists for conversion of pine needles into electricity production. And it is not understood why the government has not used this already time tested technology. Then last important point is willpower of the governments with the stringent punishments to the defaulters with the involvement of local people is the need of the hour. Right? So, now the next important point is how it is affecting biodiversity. So, forest fires in Uttarakhand blow to biodiversity. This regular burning of forests uh, resulting in wiping out of insects, uh, birds, amphibians, uh, reptiles and mammals. And as the existing forests are predominantly of uh, chir pine trees, they are not able to take care of uh, biodiversity. So, the bringing back of uh, broadleaf forests uh, is the solution in this area. Then few mammals that exist today or rhesus macaques and wild boar. You may ask what are rhesus macaques. Please look into this slide. These are rhesus macaques and wild boar. Please look into this slide. And as the forest got destroyed, they are now dependent on human habitations. Then loss of green cover is resulting into faster runoff as and when rains occur and hence the percolation into the soil is greatly reduced. Then as we have already discussed depletion of broadleaf forests that is the biggest concern in this area. This depletion of broadleaf forests led to the drying up of springs or number of springs are turning seasonal. You are getting water only seasonally that is another unfortunate event because of the depletion of broadleaf forests. Another important aspect is there is every likelihood that humans may abandon these areas due to scarcity of water. And last point is forest fires, deforestation, drying up of springs, increasing floods or disturbing the overall ecosystem of western Himalayas. Right before concluding this topic, one more important aspect is black carbon that is the leading to environmental degradation. This forest fires are resulting in production of black carbon and you may ask what is meant by black carbon. Black carbon is formed due to incomplete combustion of fossil fuels, 
biofuels and biomass you may ask what is meant by fossil fuel please look into this slide fossil fuel then biofuels then biomass biomass is nothing but wood garbage crops then alcohol fuels if these are burnt not fully partially then black carbon is released similarly fossil fuels like coal is burnt partially then black carbon is released and it is emitted directly into the atmosphere in the form of fine particles because of incomplete combustion of these forests and it has got the light absorbing properties hence the temperatures will increase so the effect of a black carbon i put it into four points so please look into this four points first is a layer of a black carbon on the glaciers glaciers you may ask what are the glaciers so please look into this slide these are icy glaciers and the formation of a black carbon on icy glaciers increases the heat because this black carbon absorbs light because of which temperature will increase because of increase in temperature what will happen these glaciers will melt so layer of black carbon on the glaciers increases heat thereby glaciers will melt then second important point these fires and the resultant black carbon can raise the temperatures in northern part of the country by 0.2 degrees centigrade which can have detrimental effect on the monsoons then waters of the rivers which originate from the icy glaciers also stand to get heavily polluted by the harmful products and compounds that constitute black carbon so the pollution of rivers is another bigger problem then black carbon floats in the air for longer time and gets deposited on clouds thereby interfering with the normal cycle of the monsoons right so these are the ill effects of a black carbon so because of a frequent forest fires in western himalayas this formation of a black carbon may lead to environmental degradation in northern part of the country so this damage to biodiversity as well as this environmental degradation may take place because of this frequent forest fires right friends so let us conclude this forest fires at this juncture let us move on to another important aspect that is draft geospatial information regulation bill 2016 this draft bill is put into the public domain and ultimately there is a criticism from several quarters with regard to this draft geospatial information regulation bill and you may ask what is meant by geospatial information geospatial information is the images or data acquired through space such as images taken from satellites aircrafts balloons unmanned aerial vehicles or drones and these are graphical or digital data depicting physical features phenomenon or boundaries of the earth example is what you are looking into the google maps or any information related to surveys charts maps terrestrial photos reference to a coordinate system so the geospatial information is basically maps or images or physical features or boundaries of the earth what we are looking into google maps day in and day out and why the government thought it necessary at this juncture because all of you are familiar with the international borders of india are shown in incorrect way for several years incorrect depiction of international borders of india is the main reason second thing is the details of important or strategic installations are going into the hands of terrorists or anti social elements the government came to know that in case of terrorist attacks the strategic details are known to the terrorists because of this geospatial information then certain social networking sites in recent times have shown 
parts of Jammu and Kashmir and Arunachal Pradesh as territories of Pakistan and China respectively. It is the regular practice and India protested several times because in several of the maps this Jammu and Kashmir region partly is shown as either disputed territory or parts of Pakistan and similarly in some of the maps Arunachal Pradesh is depicted into the territory of China. Then recently Twitter has shown the geographical location of Kashmir in China and Jammu in Pakistan triggering protests from Indian government after which it was corrected. So with this backdrop government thought it necessary to have geospatial information regulation bill that's why they put this draft guidelines into the public domain. So the salient features are no person or organization shall depict disseminate, publish or distribute any wrong or false topographic information of India including international boundaries through internet platforms or online services or in any other electronic or physical form and if this takes place a penalty can be up to rupees 100 crore and imprisonment up to a period of 7 years. Both can take place, both the penalty and imprisonment can go together or separately. So, penalty is up to rupees 100 crore, imprisonment for a period of up to 7 years and it will be mandatory to take permission from a government authority before acquiring, disseminating, publishing or distributing any geospatial information of India and Pakistan objected to these guidelines and referred the matter to United Nations and you may ask who will issue the license. Central government will set up a security vetting authority, SVA. Central government will set up security vetting authority and permission of this security vetting authority will be mandatory to acquire maps or geospatial data. And at the same time, an apex committee will oversee the functioning of security vetting authority. And some other details I have given here, you can go through these details. And publication or dissemination of a map of India to be vetted by SVA as I have just now told you. And this happens after application for license with some license fee which is yet to be defined. And provisions apply to both online and offline maps and act does not apply to Indian government bodies. And penalties, I have already told you, fines ranging from 1 crore to 100 crore and or imprisonment up to 7 years for use of illegal geospatial information outside of India and within India it is ranging from rupees 10 lakh to 100 crore and our imprisonment of up to 7 years, right? There is a lot of uh, public outcry and the government told that they will reconsider the suggestions, right? Look into the next issue. Supreme Court slams center and states for failing to tackle drought. A public interest litigation was filed by Faraj Abhiyan alleged that the center as well as the states are not taking adequate steps as one fourth of the population are affected by drought. And sarcastic comments from Supreme Court I listed out here. Center is guilty of washing its hands of a national disaster that affected one fourth of the population. And as per the Supreme Court comments, some states are adopting an ostrich-like attitude towards declaring drought and driving their own people to suicide, starvation and mass migration. Then total 33 crore people affected by drought. Can we afford to ignore the plight of such a large population, asks the Supreme Court. And the center is taking refuse in the concept of federalism to pass the buck to the states. The failure of states to declare a drought has robbed the poor of their fundamental right to dignity of life. And the suggestions given by Supreme Court are you can say directives to the center. Set up a disaster mitigation fund within three months. Establish a national disaster response force or NDRF with the specialist cadre in six months. Then frame national plan on risk assessment and crisis management 
and update the age old drought management manual and these directives are given by supreme court to the center right let us move on to economy and banking most important aspect is india and mauritius signed protocol to amend double taxation avoidance agreement and at the same time india is also going to amend double taxation avoidance agreement with the singapore also and what are the features the features of this amendments are capital gains earned by a mauritius company will be taxable in india at the full domestic tax rate from financial year 2019-20 onwards i will explain you a little later about the previous features and how the present one is different that i am going to explain you in detail and look into these points first capital gains earned by a mauritius company will be taxable in india at the full domestic tax rate from financial year 2019-20 onwards however from 1st april 2017 to 31st march 2019 that means during the next two financial years the capital gains tax rate will be 50% of the normal rate so it is a gradual transition and for the investments or shares acquired up to 31st march 2017 there will not be any capital gains even though they sell the shares after 1st april 2017 this is called grandfathering shares acquired up to 31st march 2017 will not be taxed subsequently even though they sell these shares subsequent to 1st april 2017 so this is called grandfather clause and the amendments will be applicable for the shares purchased after 1st april 2017 only and you may ask what is capital gains capital gains is nothing but the appreciation of a value of capital asset capital asset may be shares capital asset may be land capital asset may be a building and when the capital asset value increases then some tax is to be paid on the appreciation of capital value so that is called capital gains tax and as per this amendment signed both the countries will move from residence based taxation methodology to source based taxation methodology and before going into the detail let me explain what is meant by dtaa or double taxation avoidance agreement double taxation avoidance agreement is nothing but a tax treaty signed between two or more countries and what is the purpose of this double taxation avoidance agreement the main purpose is that tax payers in these countries can avoid being taxed twice for the same income if the company is registered in mauritius and they have their operations in india the income in india should not be taxed in both the countries that is the main purpose of this double taxation avoidance agreement and it applies in cases where the tax payer resides in one country and earns income in other country as just now i have explained and they are intended to make a country an attractive investment destination by providing relief on dual taxation basically to avoid the dual taxation these are intended and double taxation avoidance agreements also provide for concessional rates of taxes in some cases and india has got double taxation avoidance agreements with more than 80 countries and dtas can be comprehensive including all aspects or limited to certain areas only and india's agreement with the mauritius is a comprehensive and what happened in due course of time in due course of time what happened is they translated into double non taxation treaty abuse and round tripping right and you may ask what is meant by double non taxation by taking low faults in the system several multinational companies are neither paying tax here nor paying tax there 
or neither paying tax here and paying very less amount of tax in the country of registration that is almost leading to double non taxation second one is a treaty abuse by using the loopholes in the system they are abusing the treaty or otherwise they are resorting to tax avoidance then third important point is round tripping round tripping is india's black money through hawala route is going to countries like mauritius and is coming back to the country which is known as round tripping india's black money through hawala route is going to tiny countries like mauritius and subsequently through some shell companies it is coming back to the country that is known as round tripping so these double taxation avoidance agreements with some countries are resulting into double non taxation treaty abuse and round tripping which is resulting into tax avoidance as well as tax evasion right friends so what went wrong since dtaa was signed especially since 2000 and you should look at economic survey 2015 16 in the economic survey it was mentioned during april to november of 2015 16 fdi inflows in equity are 25 billion dollars and more than 60% came from singapore and mauritius and economic survey felt that these need to be examined more closely to determine whether they constitute actual investment inflows or diversions from other sources to avail the benefits under double taxation avoidance agreement that means suspicion is clearly evident in economic survey with regard to the quality of inflows coming from countries like mauritius so what went wrong since 2000 from 2000 to 2015 mauritius accounts for around 94 billion dollars of fdi into the country which is roughly 1/3 of total fdi during this period so during the past 15 years 1/3 of total fdi came from mauritius and please don't forget mauritius is having population of just around 12 lakhs similarly during the 15 years period mauritius accounts for around 20% of foreign portfolio investment sometimes investments from united states of america are being routed through mauritius so as to take advantage of double taxation avoidance agreement and the treaty for the past 15 years resulted in tax avoidance as we have already discussed round tripping proliferation of shell companies in mauritius with the sole aim of avoiding tax and in 2015-16 mauritius is a top source of fdi after singapore and in foreign portfolio investments also substantial investments are coming from mauritius right so i have given this to have more clarity on amendments to dtaa so the left side is the present system and the right side is what will happen after 1st april 2017 as per the present system which will be in vogue up to 31st march 2017 taxation on capital gains is residence based that means if the company is registered in mauritius and if they are doing business in our country their main source of income will be india but as per dtaa they are supposed to pay capital gains tax in the country where the company is registered see this anomaly they are getting most of the income in our country but as per the double taxation avoidance agreement they are supposed to pay capital gains tax only in the country where it is registered that's why they are registering several companies in mauritius and subsequently they are doing their operations in our country getting lot of income here and they are not paying any capital gains tax here and they are supposed to pay in mauritius but the irony is mauritius do not have capital gains tax mauritius is not taxing capital gains so technically it is leading to double non taxation that is the present status and what will happen after 1st april 2017 from 1st april 2017 it will be source based that means 
technically if you want to understand clearly up to 31st march 2017 that means as per the present day rules and regulations the capital gains tax is residence based and from 1st april 2017 it will be source based that means if the income is in our country then capital gains are to be paid in our country only so the anomaly of having residence based capital gains tax will go away partially from 1st april 2017 and fully from 1st april 2019 and it will become source based instead of residence based i hope you clearly understood the difference between the present regulations and the future regulations so the capital gains tax will shift from residence based to source based right friends with this let us conclude the lecture part for the 19th week please do join for other modules and at the same time please visit our facebook page learning space digital we have posted correction of sentences in easy to understand format and please have a look at learning space digital facebook page that is exclusive facebook page dedicated to education right friends with this let us conclude the lecture part have a nice day thank you